What's up, what it do, man? This your boy, Dead Gamer, aka Player One, and welcome to another episode of The Gamers Den. If this is your first time here, this is a show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Quick Hits. So today in Quick Hits, we got a couple articles to go through, you know what I'm saying? And we gonna switch the gears back to mainly gaming for right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting politicaled out, I'm getting social, economically outed, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's, it's too much, too much, ah, if you, if you catch my drift. But uh, let's go ahead, like I said, we got a few articles to get into it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the page, hit the rumble, hit the subscribe button, hit all of that. All the clips, whatever y'all catch this on YouTube, whatever. Let's get into it. Headline reads Gaming company Ubisoft confirms it was hacked, resets staff passwords. So, apparently, for this next going week, we're going to keep up covering the theme of hacked. As y'all know, the last, time, uh, the last company I reported I was hacked was Samsung. That's what reports was saying, and we broke that down a little bit. So it's pretty much the uh, same thing here after we get if we uh, after we go through this little bit of information. The Montreal headquarter firm said that an investigation into the breach was underway and that it has initiated a company-wide password reset as a precautionary measure. So, you know, Ubisoft also confirmed that there was a victim of a cybersecurity incident, you know, so within over the past few days so um, once again, you know, there's been a string of these so-called hacks. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I don't know why people are hacking them. I don't, I don't know what. I mean, all these companies, Nvidia, Samsung, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, they do have value, and I'm pretty sure they do have valuable information. Things that could be leaked, drafts, projects, uh, theories, all kinds of stuff. Prime example would be, I think it was CD Projekt Red got hacked. Yeah, they got hacked like a little while after or a little before the Cyberpunk 2077 release. I may or may not be accurate about this, but I do remember somebody getting hacked and then a lot of uh, sketches and a lot of information about a next game that a lot of fans and gamers were anticipating came out and, or they were holding it up for ransom saying, hey, if you guys want this, do this or whatever because we have the information about the game and we will leak it. So, uh, you know, all I got to say is I don't know what the what's going on at you companies or whatever the case. But once again, if y'all doing something wrong, stop doing people wrong. If you know, I don't know if you're not honoring the dates that you set and people got to hack it to your system to get what you've been promising. Maybe you should come through more. I, I really don't know what to say about that. But, you know, this does just as a general concept of cybersecurity for everybody from the smallest level or the lowest level to the highest level make sure you got your security tapped in and in check make sure you got two-factor authentication on make sure you got to go through loops and hoops make sure it's whatever it is that you got to do make sure it's the hardest thing ever for somebody to get into your stuff because once you get hacked all your information is susceptible to be leaked and put out on the information and stuff like that Granted, all these companies and the internet, when you accept the cookies and all that, they give they selling your data anyway. Even if they, um, I went over this a few episodes ago. Even if they uh, disclose it as non-personal data, that's pretty much just smudging up the lines. It's like redacted, if you know what redacted means. It's like making like certain information in your data redacted. That way, nobody can actually pinpoint that this is you specifically your data. But uh, let's go ahead and move on, man. We're going to step into the world of cloud gaming for a minute. As you know, I'm a cloud gamer. Headline, head, oh my God. Headline reads, GeForce now adds $20 a month option for its top cloud gaming tier. So if you don't know what GeForce now is, GeForce now is a cloud-based service that uh, NVIDIA has. I believe it's just, yeah, NVIDIA, NVIDIA has. Now, apparently, let's, well, I'll just go through it. One of the big annoyances with NVIDIA's best uh, and albeit most expensive RTX 3080 plan for its GeForce Now cloud gaming service is that you couldn't try it out without paying for the $100 six month subscription. Now the company has expanded its plans to include a $20 monthly 
The RTX 3080 Play lets you play games remotely at 1440p resolution and at 120 frames per second, a high level performance. You know, and then they go on to talk about how the $20 a month make it a little easier. It still comes out to a hundred bucks five, six months later, you still pay a hundred. So it's pretty much no change. It's just the price point change. And I think that was a good move for them just in the sense of the cloud gaming business model in the set in the self with stadia being the poster boy for cloud gaming so with stadia you pay 10 stadia is free mind you so what i'm talking about is the paid tier subscription and the perks and the in the uh, incentives you get when you pay for stadia pro so if you want stadia pro it's just ten dollars a month and you get free games you get better discounts than normal and you get access and all these features and resolutions and all kinds of stuff right this that's like and that's the same model for pretty much all streaming no matter if it's cloud or not uh, netflix hulu all of that you pay x amount of dollars a month then you get access to all this stuff the difference between stadia and uh, nvidia is that stadia is free so you don't even have to pay for stadia pro to get the game one moment all right I had to go ahead and re uh reset it up because uh we back to normal over here man forgot to let y'all know we back to normal I fixed my tripod up I got it up you know it's just I still got to use the, the iPhone I got for the camera you know what I'm saying but um I digress in conclusion of what I was previously saying I think this is a good step for Nvidia as far as their service model because it makes it more affordable they still get their hundred dollar hundred dollar profit or whatever that they was going for and yeah you know it's a uh, good in the, and what they have as an advantage over other cloud gaming services is the RTX 38 so I think this is a good move for Nvidia Nvidia keep it up this is just gonna further the cloud gaming space as a whole I want the whole cloud gaming space to succeed with Stadia preferably at the forefront but just cloud gaming in general because cloud gaming in itself is the future and we have one more thing to go through in quick hits. Keeping y'all stacked up, man. Keeping y'all stacked up. Headline reads, Elden Ring was best-selling game of February, second best, best launch month sales of any game in the past 12 months in the U.S. So if you've been living under a rock, you don't know that Elden Ring is popping off. People going crazy, posting their clips on the internet, Twitter, YouTube, everything. So it's a Dark Souls game, and it's going crazy. It was one of my uh, highly anticipated games of this year, and so far, just with the consumer and fan feedback, it's definitely living up to that. I haven't got a chance to play it yet. Granted, I'm just full cloud gaming at this point, so whenever Bandai Namco or whoever decides to put Elden Ring on the cloud i will be playing it but let's go ahead and get into it elder ring is also the best selling game of 2022 year to date and what's more is that it is secured the second best launch month sales of any title of any title in the past 12 months coming in second only to last november's call of duty vanguard on top of that after just one month of the u.s video game market elder ring is already ranked as the fifth best selling game over the past year it ranked first on both Xbox consoles and PC, coming in second only on PlayStation hardware. Well, on PlayStation hardware. So that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Like, Elden Ring really came on the scene and is doing numbers. Like, people who don't even play RPG games and single-player adventure games is playing this game. Like, it's just all, like, the evidence is all over the, it's all over the world. It's all over the internet. You can go, like, Elden Ring dropped, and my Twitter feed has been, like, Carlos Miller, Elden Ring, football, basketball, start over. Well, Thirst Trap, start over. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's like, yo, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody, man. Uh, I'm glad Elden Ring is seeing success because, like I said, this was one of the games of that I had high anticipation for this year. So that's, uh, you know, it's dope. You know, we'll see how it ends out. Uh, it's probably contender for game of the year right now. You know, I still say we gotta wait for for Spoken and a couple other uh, heavy hitters this year. But uh, you never know, man. You never know. And that's gonna do it for quick hits. 
You did what I'm saying. If you made it this far, appreciate you for rocking with the God. And before we move on to the main topic, a couple words from our sponsors. What's up? What it do, man? It's your boy, Daddy Gamer, a.k.a. Player One, the God himself. Telling y'all to make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel. 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday and Saturday, going live on YouTube, playing all kinds of video games. That's what we do, you know what I'm talking about. So make sure you tap in. Links is in the description. So make sure you subscribe and support over there, too. We going up. Don't miss out on the live streams, you dig? Back to your regular scheduled program. Okay, so now that that's done, this is a, a conversation the conversation we about to have is something that I can't not not drag out. So I know y'all be like, oh my God, this bro is about to talk. Oh my God. This is going to be one of those clips that I am going, where I'm going to put that, I'm actually put the main topic on YouTube for the clips. So, um, and this is also a touchy subject too, because it's kind of, blew up earlier this year with G4. So all of this is going to tie in and y'all finally going to get my opinion and my thoughts on the whole G4 champ falling down and they fall from grace and just the whole scene of content creators and gaming in general, right? So headline reads, Pokimane says that women struggle with the quote glass ceiling on Twitch. Now, um, it's a couple things in here, a couple paragraphs in here, you know, that really support this. And I do agree, you know what I'm saying? And there's also a couple uh, content creators and streamers mentioned throughout this article where I do agree. So I will read those and pull those up. That way y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. And we'll get this information in. Hold on one moment. Okay. So, um. The battery is slowly but surely dying, so I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as possible, so be able to keep up, right? So, let's get into it. Pokemon recently pointed out that while women might have a quote unquote easier time breaking into Twitch, female streamers have to contend with a quote glass ceiling when they become established on the platform. She said that women have a limit to their career potential on Twitch, quote, when you have 100 viewers viewers or less, there's so many channels that when you're a girl, you stand out because there's just less girls than guys on this platform, which is true. The comments made by Pokemon mirror, the, mirror those of another popular streamer, Ms. Kiff. Quote, I'm going to say something that's honestly true. Women have much easier time getting the initial 100 to 200 viewers. I'm sorry, it's just that that's the truth. And if you don't think that's the truth, then you're wrong. And that is the truth. You know, women do have it a lot easier in gathering up viewers and views really quickly because like they said, it's just a lot easier and women stand out more on the platform. So, you know, they're gonna say it. So we just, I'm gonna just keep reading. Ms. Kiff also explained, quote, women have a glass ceiling and it's almost impossible to get through. Men have an infinite ceiling. They are not hard capped. Women are hard capped at a ceiling of around 600 to 1,000 viewers. Similar to Ms. Kiff, Pokemon attributed the early, the early, early career success of women on Twitch to their visibility. Quote, when you're scrolling, if you see 10 guys and one girl, you're more likely to click on the girl. They stand out more. At the end of the day, Twitch continues to be a male dominated field. And when it comes to content, it tends to be easier to watch people you relate to. Until there's more of an even demographic on Twitch, you're going to have these issues. So that's just kind of the facts about it, man. Like at the end of the day, you know, that's that's right. You can open Twitch right now, go on the homepage, and you'll see uh, a bunch of dudes. You'll see a bunch of men. And then you'll be just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And then you'll see the one girl in the list, the one woman in the lineup. And you'll be like, I'll click. Click, 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 click. I agree with that. That is true. You know what I'm saying? Do I now, do they have a glass ceiling of 600 to 1,000 viewers? No, not really. And my example will be Valkyrie. Valkyrie, she has way more than 1,000 viewers. So I don't necessarily think women have a ceiling per se. I just think 
they have it. I just think it's the exposure. I think that's what it is. I don't think they hard capped at like 600 to 1,000 views. I just think it's, it's content exposure. Like, is your content really digestible for all parties and all viewing eyes? I think that's just what it is. But we'll keep going. Uh, let's see, I read that already. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going. Pokimane pointed out on the parasocial relationships frequently go hand in hand with success for women on Twitch. She said that female streamers often end up with hundreds of quote parasocial viewers early in their career. If you only have 10 viewers, you're giving a lot of attention to those 10 people. When guys are watching a girl and she gets more popular, some will get bitter. They aren't getting the same attention from their queen. End quote. Mm, excuse me. Miss Kip had previously made the same remark, noting that it's easier for female streamers to get more view quote, it's easier for female streamers to get more viewers, but I'm telling you, they also deal with way more shit. Women deal with stalkers, they deal with annoying fucks, and they deal with men bothering them. But that's just how it is in streaming. Pokemon, I said Pokemon. You might as well be Pokemon, Pokemon. Pokemon has dealt with parasocial relationships before, but quote, that's just how it is in streaming, she said. So, how does this, right? How does all of this tie into the G4 debacle? Okay, so now that I ran through this information and I said a little bit, I said, let's start from the top down. The G4 fall from grace. To be honest with y'all, I've made a lot of videos and scrapped them all. I made a lot of videos and scrapped them all on Frost, on G4, you know, just as a brand company. I made it over and over and over and over and over. Overwhelming evidence, overwhelming stuff. But then I thought to myself, do I really care? The answer was no. I don't give a fuck, right? What I cared about was that Frost gave up the sauce on how the show works or how their reviews work. She essentially let the cat out of the bag, letting it be known that they don't necessarily themselves do the review. There's a team of people because there's too many games. Hence the next clip. Here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many games for one person to shoulder the burden. So we divide and conquer. And when we use language like we or I, that's the reviewer. That's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. And that's not to say that Gerard, TBH, Adam, or myself don't contribute to the reviews. We absolutely do. But it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us. That's why we're X play and not Adam play. We have done the experiment and controlled for the variables. Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. Right. So now when you back it up even more, she said that, mind you, she hid all of this because the segment was like a grind my gear segment on, you know, a gripe in gaming or whatever. So she made, she so she threw it behind Red Dead Redemption without re really touching on the gripe with the Red Dead Redemption community or whatever the case in detail. Like she, she threw out the headline and the title of the book and whatever the issue was. But then she just said, scrap all that women in gaming and made it that. And sidewinded everybody. Hence clip. So when this originally happened and my gaming grievance was actually going to be about Red Dead Online. So the subreddit for Red Dead Online, I'm a huge Red Dead Online player. I love Red Dead Redemption 2. I think it's probably my favorite game of all time. And right now the Red Dead Online community are trying to get this hashtag going called Save Red Dead Online. And they've got it covered by Kotaku, Polygon, um, Game Rants, like Forbes I think also did a coverage of it. And they think that this will get Rockstar's attention and... Rockstar will come back to them and give them exactly what they want. And we can actually scroll this down. I'll tell you when to stop scrolling. Good. Stop right there. But I'm here to tell you, and you're going to have to cut this B-roll in a second, because it's, uh, it's done. And what I think, I do think that there is a larger discussion about Red Dead Online and 
that we need to have eventually about game design versus immersive experience and comparing the Red Dead Online multiplayer experience versus the solo player one. But I actually want to talk about something so much more important than Red Dead Online. Sexism in gaming. So now, so now, right, you have to fast forward to when she says she actually pre-planned this and goes to the production team and the writers to get it in there and they put it in there. Hence this clip. And they didn't, I'm sorry, they didn't know that I was gonna do this. I wrote that during lunch and then I had a conversation with some of our writers and producers and I was, I was just writing it as like a therapy thing but then I was like talking and I was like, yeah, you're right, I'll put it in. And then our, one of our producers, Gabby, slid it in for me so uh, I can, that was a trust fall on everyone's hands. <laughs> nah, that was great. So mind you, when all of this stuff was going on in real time, you had geeks and gamers, you had all these different YouTube channels, the quartering, all this stuff. I'm name dropping like a motherfucker this episode. And I don't, let me pick up these names I just dropped. Because yeah. I don't really do the name drops, but I keep it a K. I'm, I'm thorough and consistent through and through. So, you know, everybody made these reaction videos and commented about it and the geeks and gamers of g4 had this big back and forth g4 just took the pussy route and was like hey if you don't agree with us we don't like you we don't want you as a fan and he did all that and i'm like bro i don't agree with a lot of people you don't see me sitting here running a convenience store and be saying oh we don't like the same color so you can't shop here like that's dumb as hell you know it don't make no sense so with that being said Let's trickle it down to this, right? The the female streamer thing. It's the same sense, right? Now, what did they say? Women content creators and women streamers have to deal with what? Stalker people, creepy people, motherfuckers who got this weird affinity form or whatever the case. To a degree, yes, but literally everybody is not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So therefore, what what I think is your your work will show. Your work will show. You just can't have the answer and then not show your work. Remember back in school when the teacher would be like, show your, you just can't answer the answer. You got to show your work. So apparently you just can't put two divided by six plus this equals that. You have to show the work. So, okay, I went over here, took the two over here. You do this, you do this blah 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 move this over add this to the third power and then you get this but then you got to divide it by this to make sure you get that so when you divide the answer from what you use three fucking times and it come out it's the same answer three times then you know you got the answer sometimes you like your work has to speak for itself so as to where frost okay you've been in the, she's been in the gaming industry for a while she's made reports she's done reviews whatever the case a lot of people made it about um you know oh she gave a bad review and that's why everybody gave her the backlash i think it's something different when she was on the boosted show if you guys go through this and do the work i don't know if i'm going to be doing the uh the research and the work again to do all that because I unsubscribe from G4 and all that and I don't feel like fishing. Um, you know, where Avali made a joke, shout out to Avali, Avali made a joke about Frost being a lesbian and not being able to have kids saying, because Frost said her and her wife is trying to have kids but they're failing and Avali said, because you're trying with a woman. Nobody got mad, everybody laughed. Cause one, it's the truth. Two, it's actually funny. Three, what? That was maybe a time or two, like a, a, a week or two before the airing of the whole meltdown ep uh, episode. Now, you sit and take a lesbian woman, full blown lesbian woman adult. She's struggling to have children with her in her relationship. Decides to go on television live on the air on television and on the internet causes the brand and the company she works for to lose subscribers to lose in the thousands people by saying it's men's fault because because she let everybody apparently get to her and hurt her feelings or whatever like she stated 
and stuff because they don't find her attractive or whatever the case. So because she's not found attractive by a certain group of people or one person or whoever the fuck, I don't fucking know. Hey, she just... And then pre-planned it. And that's one thing everybody in all these response videos miss, that she pre-planned it. She pre-planned it. So now, this is the type of shit that's happening in the game industry. Now, female streamers have less of that issue. They just have the issue of exposure. That's what I think. They just have the exposure issue. Like, that's all there really is, exposure issue. I'm pretty sure if a lot of female streamers had the exposure that Valkyrie had, had the exposure that some of these bigger, uh, even Pokemon, they would be doing great. They wouldn't have to stress so much. I mean, shit, Pokemon popped off so hard, she ends up in the movie. Valkyrie got her own makeup. Valkyrie got all this. She hunted thieves. Like, like I think the work just has to show for it. And like how other people, groups of people, colors of people, whatever, got to work harder just because of that or because of what other perception is running things, that's just what it is. We playing video games. Elden Ring don't give a fuck if you a woman. Do you know how to press this X button with this A button with this circle button to do a combo? Like, it, it just it, it's hard to, like, find the line, right, of where it is and where it ain't. Now, I'm not for all dehumanizing people, but I am for holding people accountable. So, this brings me to this. BBC, no, not the BBC you thinking, and no, not mine. The BBC news people, right? What they did was they did a little piece on women in gaming, feminism in gaming, and toxic masculinity or whatever on gaming. And what happened was some I was watching it and I'm just sitting here, okay, okay, I'm listening. Okay, okay. And women, you know, along the lines of what the article said, they deal with people calling them names, weirdos, people with just, you know, crazy affinities for them. And then the interviewer asked the following question, hence this clip. <laughs> like most games, it goes two ways. So one is, they will say, oh my god, babe, I love you. This kind of weird stuff. Like they never seen a girl in their life. Sometimes it's like a toxic one. They'll be like, oh, woman, go back to the kitchen. It's a pretty general trash talk, so. There's mixed views about how to encourage more women into esports. One idea that's been trialled by Formula One esports this year is to guarantee a female player a spot in high-profile tournaments. Others think the only way to get women onto the biggest stages is to split esports into male and female competitions entirely. But not everyone agrees. So, so you're saying that you wouldn't want there to be a division where women can't play against men? Oh, that'd be horrible. I wouldn't play the game if that was the case, um, personally. <laughs> so, tell me why. Can you explain that? Like at the current scene right now, I think all of us individually would be like, that would it wouldn't be fun. Like, we wouldn't have any competition or if we just only had to play against other women's teams, that just, um, like, the point of me playing every day is to improve and I just wouldn't be doing that. So, when the interviewer asked her, would you want to compete in a all-women's league she said no. Why did she say no? Because there wouldn't be competition. So she essentially called all female gamers trash in comparison to male gamers indirectly. But y'all gonna sit here and act like she didn't say that because y'all gonna wanna play the semantics game. So because you wanna play semantics, that's what you wanna do. And that in this day and age with everybody being overly sensitive and everybody wanna play angles, that's all you want. that's all everybody gonna do. This video could go out, clips of this is going to get chopped up, chopped up, and this is already a clip in itself. So they're going to be thinking, what, this is a clip? How long is the show? Well, hey, this is a long episode, boy. I do this. 60 plus in, I do this. But hey. And that wraps it all up. If female gamers, streamers, content creators, if y'all thinking like that chick is in the BBC video where she's sitting here saying she wouldn't play in an all-female league because of toxic masculinity and et cetera, et cetera, then guess what? You just gonna have to eat the bullet, man. You just gonna have to eat the bullet. That's how y'all is. It don't make no sense. 
all these semantics. Cut it out. At the end of the day, do I have anything against female content creators, female streamers? No, I don't. I don't. I actually am more, I have more of a relationship with female content creators than I do male creators. That's pretty much all I got to say about it, man. Feminism, this womanist stuff in gaming will not thrive. It will not. At the end of the day, you got to put your money where your mouth is. Your skill versus mine, Call of Duty. Your skill versus mine, Tekken. Your skill versus mine, puzzle games, any multiplayer game, anything. The issue that women have when it comes to gaming and the content creating streaming world is regular people shit. Like, like all men ain't all these weirdos that had these weird affinities for motherfuckers. But the thing is, women, y'all have to understand something. Y'all get all of these viewers just off your face. Y'all get these viewers off your face. Y'all get these viewers off your body. Didn't the one chick go viral for fucking deep throating the sucking the dick on the fucking Twitch? <laughs> I'm just saying, bro, y'all know what it is. We know what it is too, but we don't complain about it. We got to work about it as men. But um, before I make this episode too damn long with rambling and stuff, um, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of the Gamers Den. If you made it this far, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, hit the rumble, all that. Make sure you support. Link is in the description for all merch. As you can see, player one shirts, player one pants, the Gamers Den sweatshirts, all kinds of stuff is going down. Make sure you do that to support the guy. It is very appreciated. Everything go, everything goes back into the show for bigger and better production. With that being said, I'm going to catch y'all next time, man. Gone.